Welcome everyone. We are calling the Monday, March 9th, Kettlebell Hills Board of Commissioners meeting to order. If you would please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we move on with our agenda, if you would also join us for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you all for joining and being with us this <coughs> evening. Um, it's nice to see we have some young folks in the room with us this evening and a, a full agenda tonight. Um, but uh, anyway, hopefully you guys will, we won't keep you too long, especially the little ones that are here, but you get to see a little bit of your government in action this evening. So the first thing on our agenda is the approval of the agenda as presented. So moved. No second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Now we're moving on to public comment. This is the first time set aside this evening for public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone that wishes to address the board on any item for them to, uh, to be able to do so. We do ask that if you are speaking as an individual that you limit your comments to three minutes. If you are speaking on behalf of a group, if you would limit those comments to five minutes. And that's just to be respectful, to make sure that everybody who wishes to speak has an opportunity to do so. Um, we do have a sign-up sheet, or we did have a sign-up sheet. We have two names that we'll call from first from the sign-up sheet, and then if anyone else wishes to speak, we'll just call from the floor. Uh, when you come to speak during public comment, if you would just please identify yourself by name and address. And first, we welcome Matt Walker. Matt. Um, hello, Matt Walker, 439 West Walker Street, uh, here on behalf of the Surfighter Foundation again. Um, last time I came up here, I talked to you guys, I uh, said we were going to the uh, Norfolk Bureau of Ocean Energy Management meeting. Since then, they actually scheduled one for Kill Devil Hills, which I'm sure you're all aware of. It's next Monday from 3 to 7, so that's the opportunity for y'all and anyone else uh, to go make a statement uh, to the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management about offshore drilling. Um, it's a private sort of setup, but not, private's not the word, but it's different than most public hearings in the past where people could stand up and make their thoughts known. You go in, you submit a statement, a uh, written comment. So we're also, um, as part of a, our Not the Answer NC campaign, we've also set up uh, a room next door at the Comfort Inn at 430 where we're going to be holding a press conference and a rally to invite speakers to give just their statement on the economic reasons on why this is a bad idea, not just for our community, um, but for the state as a whole, all the financial data and whatnot. In fact, we're happy to say Ms. Mayor Davies is gonna be um, one of our speakers, and so we'd love to have anyone who wants to show their support to come out to there and just stand in solidarity, I guess, for lack of a better term. And in addition to that, um, we're gonna do part of the parade on Sunday before that. We're gonna have a float in the parade, so if anyone wants to come join the parade, um, Please do. Like I said, it's all about just showing the, the outpouring of, I guess, opposition, for lack of a better term. And for all this information, you can just go to Facebook to Not The Answer NC. We've got event pages set up. You can find out everything you need to know about this ongoing campaign, because I'm sure it's going to continue. And on that note, you can also, we just launched our NotTheAnswerNC.org uh, website, and there's a bunch of great portraits that were shot by... Um, uh, Julie Drillin and Daniel Poland over the last week and then beyond that where we've got people just showing all the different economic all the jobs basically it's people with human faces with the jobs they do here they're all supported by our clean uh, beaches whether it's fishing tourism etc and all the revenue that produces so that's going to turn into an Instagram hashtag bonanza any dime so you're welcome, <laughs> welcome to join in on that as well and just stay tuned and, and how we can keep this sort of awareness going so I think that's about it according to my notes but that's about it thank you very much as always Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Next, we have Clay Richardson. Welcome, Clay. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Clay Richardson, 412 West Palmetto Street. Um, well, I spoke at the joint uh, meeting we had between the Community Appearance Commission, the Planning Board, and the Commissioners about the change to FAR. 
and um, supporting the change and just wanted to reemphasize that. There are a few people that wanted to speak also and I asked them if they would mind, wouldn't mind that maybe I would speak and I just asked them to stand to show their support on it. So if the ones who um, said they were coming to support that, I'd appreciate it, showing their support. And I'm not thinking about the young ones that are trying to get home to bed, but I'm thinking about the old ones like me, too. So <laughs> I don't want to bore everybody with a lot of detail, but I wanted to show you all support that, uh, that, that we uh, appreciate you all bringing this up. Thank you. Thanks, Clay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak at this public comment time? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Sue Kelly, 211 C Village Lane, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Community Appearance Commission. Um, in 2012, our, our newly elected Board of Commissioners created the Community Appearance Commission, and our task was to do whatever we could to make KDH look as nice as it could. And we're proud of what we've done. Um, I'll just mention Trash Attack, which you're going to hear more about tonight. And also, our um, every two years, our Community Appearance Award, and lots of other things. Um, we are a group of seven. We represent a lot of aspects of our community. Um, we have business people. We have builders. We have retired people. And we work very well together, along with our liaison from the Planning Board and from the Board of Commissioners. So the FAR thing has been before you many times now. And uh, let me just say a couple things that maybe haven't been said a dozen times already. There are really very few buildings in KDH, commercial buildings, the kind of buildings that the FAR would apply to, that exceed 0.6, the current FAR. Um, and there really aren't that many that would exceed <coughs> what the proposed FAR is if it's lowered. Um, and I, I think everybody knows by now that if your building is destroyed by natural disaster or fire, you can build back to what you had. Um, that's, that's covered. So maybe a big issue for folks, and I think it was for um, Commissioner Judge who was with us in the past about this, is what happens if you need to rebuild, that is tear down an older building, let's say a motel, and build another one. And I think there are folks who would like to be able to say that they can put a building on their property that will be the most successful for them. And we really don't want to inhibit that. We think that the proposal that will be for this board um, will allow a reasonable amount of space to be taken up on a piece of property. Um, we really don't want to inhibit business in any way. We just want to make sure that our town um, stands as attractive as it can be, and we think that this is an important part of it. So I think I'll end by saying that I hope that tonight we take care of this. Um, you all are probably tired of having it on so many agendas. Um, we've worked hard on it and um, hope that you will see fit to lower the floor area ratio to 0.4, or 0.45 or 0.5 depending upon certain conditions for those two higher ones and we thank this board very much for all your attention and all the folks that have been involved in this discussion thank you thank you thank you Sue. is there anyone else that would like to speak at this public comment time yes hey skip welcome Skip Jones, uh, 1508 Captain's Lane, been here a fair while and seen the beats change over the years. Um, I'm also on the um, same committee as the, as the previous two speakers. Um, and we thought about this a great deal and I think that um, the town has looked at this in depth. And I think there's been a great deal said about it. And I feel like um, I th Eddie pointed out something to me la in that last meeting that I kind of agree with that the FAR doesn't really approach the setback, side setbacks as much as I would like to see open areas as far as sight lines and all go, but I think it's a good start. Um, I think at some point, I don't want to take away from the hotel owners, I think at some point we really need to look at 
increasing setbacks but letting them go up a little bit and that's a whole nother ball of wax so we don't want to get into that right now but I'm definitely for the FAR I think it's a great compromise that y'all have come up with and um, I think it'll make our town look better thank you thank you so Thanks, much. Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. okay is there anyone else that would like to speak at this public comment time yes hey Jeff <coughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Fabricant, representing the John Yancey Hotel Group. Um, I've obviously been up here before as well and sent you all a letter. I just want to reiterate, you know, as a hotel owner, I think hotels and condos play a very important role in tourism for small groups and small families, and I think there are unintended consequences. Uh, I think the board should not look to fight battles of the past of existing buildings since you can rebuild those and rather look towards the future and look towards ways to encourage new hotels, or if there was a storm that took out a hotel, that hotel doesn't become houses. I think hotels are great for groups, you know, um, uh, student groups, weddings, um, and I think that's something that houses don't <coughs> cater to, and I'd like to see, you know, the future of Kill Devil Hills having more hotels, not less hotel rooms, and, um, you know, I hope you all would consider some sort of hotel overlay district, which I threw out some ideas on and uh, look for ways to have more hotels and condos, not less. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. 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 Is there anyone else this evening that would like to speak at this public comment time? Okay. Seeing no hands, no, okay. Thank you all, we'll um, move on to response to public comment. Uh, Matt, thanks for sharing your information. I have a couple of things to add to that um, during the, the mayor's agenda. Um, and then thank you all for the comments on the FAR. We will um, discuss that here shortly under that agenda item. So, is that good? Okay. Um, next, then, we'll move on to introductions and presentations. We have three um, presentations this evening. Uh, the first is from the Outer Bank Sporting Events, um, information on their upcoming events. I know Ms. Linda Wood is here. Welcome. Mayor Davies and members of the board, thank you very much for allowing me to come and speak with you tonight on behalf of the Dare Education Foundation. And here representing the Dare Education Foundation is Elizabeth Piff, Executive Director. And I am and, um, <coughs> the Outer Banks Relief Foundation. And as well, I have our brand new race director here with me tonight that I'd like to introduce to you. And it's uh, Jenny Ash. She's been living here on the Outer Banks for about the last four years. She just recently moved to Duck to her new home with her husband Steve and three children. They came here from Minneapolis where she was heavily involved with YMCA and programming there. So I know you can uh, relate to that. Uh, she uh, is an avid athlete. She's done many triathlons, marathons, and various other events and helped plan many events while she was associated with the uh, YMCA and other community organizations in Minneapolis. So with that, we would like to present to you some of the economic impact that our bank sporting events events had this past year. Uh, you did get a handout from us, I do believe. Uh, most of you know that we are a nonprofit. Our um, proceeds go to for public education and local citizens in need. And we bring athletes here from all over the world to participate in our events, and they're all during the shoulder season. We have four major events uh, that we have each year. And I will see if I can work this, Greg. Let's see. There you go. Uh, that help um, uh, provide for the economic development here on the Outer Banks, and we bring large numbers of participants. Uh, this happens to be our 5K that's held here in Kill Double Hills, um, the start of the 5K. 
Over 89% of our participants come from out of the area. We had 11,500 uh, registrants last year. And um, of those, 23% said that they were first time visitors here to the Outer Banks. And uh, in 2013, 26% said they were first-time visitors here to the Outer Banks. So our events are indeed bringing first-timers here to help with our uh, economic impact. We also have two expos, one with the Flying Pirate in the spring and the other with the uh, Outer Banks Marathon in November. Uh, many of our local businesses participate in that, and it gives them an opportunity to get an economic boost. Um, Soundfeet Shoes, uh, the Outer Bank Store, uh, Birthday Suits, uh, let's see, Try Outer Bank Store, uh, the Roanoke Island Running Company, many of our churches, our restaurants, Tanger Outlets, and uh, others. Uh, have told us that this really does improve their business during that particular time of the year. And it's held at the um, Parks and Recreation Center here in Kill Devil Hills. Also, many of our property managers participate and they have the opportunity to talk to thousands of people here from out of town and that has helped to in, um, improve the overnight economic uh, impact for the uh, accommodations industry here. Our first event of the year is coming up in just um, about a month from now is the Flying Pirate Half Marathon and First Flight 5K. The uh, 5K has sold out already. Those of you that have, I guess, are participating with the hospital's health initiative with the C25 K. Uh, we're very fortunate to be able to get into that event, but we have taken over 1,100 registrations for that event. So you will have a lot of people running in your town uh, that weekend just for the 5K, not including the half marathon. This happens to be the finish um, of the uh, 2013 um, Flying Pirate. Our, our next event of the year is held in June. Uh, it's our newest event, Storm the Beach. It's an obstacle course and a uh, adventure race on the beach. And we have three divisions. So the kids that are here, we have a kids division. And it's a mile long run and you can do it with your parents and your family and have a great time. All kinds of obstacles on the beach. Uh, we catered uh, uh, all athletic um, people of all athletic abilities from the family f um, run to a three miler to a five miler. Uh, the registration for that event has increased 132 percent since 2012. Last year we had uh, 750 some register and over 700 participate. We had 26 states represented and Germany and Canada. So we do have people here from all over the world for a lot of our events. 26% of those um, registered <laughs> said they were here for the very first time to the Outer Banks. So we're excited to know that people are coming here to visit our beautiful Outer <laughs> Banks to do these events. In September, we do the triathlon. Um, we have... Um, three different series in that race and you can see some of the pictures of different things that go on there. It's held on Roanoke Island for those of you that might not know that. And then in November our signature event, the Outer Banks Marathon, and where we have um, not only a marathon about a half 8k 5k fun run and a southern six which is an adult fun run for those of you that aren't that competitive but want to join your more competitive a runner and finish the race in downtown Manio or if you just want to do it with friends and have a good time. Um, you can see some of the scenes from Kill Devil Hills in Nags Head Woods and also Bay Drive. That particular event itself just in 2014 had over 5,000 participants 
and uh, had an economic impact of $6.3 million. Now, how do we know that? For those of you that never heard our presentations before, we ask the questions to the participants when they're registering, and they tell us how long they're staying, how many people they're bringing with them, and uh, where they intend to stay. So with that, the total economic impact for 2014 came out to be 8,000, I mean 8 million, 8.9 million dollars, which was way up from 2013. And that was based on 9,900 total finishers. We didn't count all 11,500 that registered. We only counted those that showed up and their guests. But we took out the local runners. So even without counting the local runners, counting those that are from out of town and their guests, we had about 34,000 visitors here from out of the area in 2014. <coughs> Oops. Let me make sure I'm on the right page. <laughs> okay, Greg, you might have to help me. Okay, there we are. With 2014, we had 12 countries represented, all 50 states. 56% uh, were female. Their, our age um, average was 35 to 45. Our participants stayed 2.5 nights and brought 2.8 visitors with them. Uh, for your hotel and motel owners, you'll be glad to know that 8,000 room nights were booked just by our participants. And the rental on um, houses, we had 16,000 rental houses, I mean 1,600, thank you, rental houses booked uh, by the participants. How does that affect Kill Devil Hills? Well, 2000. 30 participants told us that they intended to stay in the town of Kildella Hills. And if you add the number of guests they brought with them, and an average of $75 a day spent on meals and gas and shopping and those kinds of things for 2.5 days, there's a total of about $2 million in economic impact during the shoulder season from these events. So we really feel like that we are making a difference, not only in the entire <laughs> county, but in your town. And we appreciate the fact that you guys have worked with us since 2006, when we had the very first marathon. And uh, we're able to use the facilities here in Kill Level Hills to make our events even better than they would be. Overall, over the last nine years, since 2006, $47.5 million in economic impact has been generated by the marathon and the other events. All of our local proceeds go to the Dare Education Foundation to fund public school education and the Outer Banks Relief Foundation to um, help those local citizens in need. We also support healthy kids initiatives such as go far we um some of the children may have participated in that in the schools we have fun runs and children's activities in three of our four events and we encourage our local youth to volunteer and we give them a stipend for helping us uh, through volunteerism to support the events uh, trends and uh, challenges for us uh, predominantly female, except for the triathlon. We have 56% female triathlon. I think 54% male. Um, you know, the Flying Pirate has sold out. All I mean, the first flight 5K is sold out at the Flying Pirate. The challenge has also sold out as well, and that's if you can do the 5K on Saturday and the uh, half on Sunday, which we've had over 700 people register for that. So uh, that's already sold out. Storm the Beach continues to grow. Um, and uh, some of our challenges, as some of you well know, is parking at the expo site. 
uh, storm the beach parking, the course. Um, we'd like to increase the numbers we can have on the tri course. Um, but we, for safety's sake, we haven't increased how many can register for that. And competition, lots and lots of competition out there with other events. Um, and um, we just have to stay on the cutting edge to continue to bring people here. And as we grow, we have a small community, and we can only ask so much from our volunteers and our sponsors. So we have to continue to keep that in mind. Are there any questions? With that, at this time, we would like to present you with an official poster from our marathon 2014 to add to the beautiful collection <laughs> that you have over here on the wall. Thank you so much for your continued help and support throughout the years, and we look forward to working with you for a long time in the future. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Linda. Linda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have um, Officer Sarah McDowell here um, to talk to us about the upcoming Citizens Police Academy. Kind of a follow up to the video. If you were here at the beginning of the meeting, that yeah, you that saw. was that was my presentation. Was the video? <laughs> so if you missed it, I apologize. It's on YouTube. You can actually go to Gov, the Gov Network or whatnot. Find it on YouTube under KDH Citizens Police Academy. Click on it and watch it in its entirety. I, I'm here today just to let everybody know it starts next week, Monday, March 16th. Um, we'll be every Monday starting at six o'clock. We roughly go six to eight. Sometimes we push it to nine. Sometimes we're out at 7.30. It just depends on how many questions. It's free. You just need to be 21 years old or older to participate. Um, and we look forward to, to housing as many people as we can. I brought some applications. I'll leave them in the back for anybody that's interested in what the topics will be on what day so they can kind of uh, see exactly what we'll be, be covering. And then, of course, on the inside, it has all the information. Any questions? The video did a good job covering it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank That's you. A Thanks, great Sarah. program. Thanks. OK. Next, under um, introductions and presentations, um, we have, I know we have representatives. Chris Merrick is here from the Trash Attack Committee. And uh, Chris is our chair this year for Trash Attack. Um, I just, are there committee members here tonight? Chris with you? I think we have Sue, Sue Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. So this is our second year of bringing the trash attack back to the town of Kittleville Hills. Um, last year was a, a great kind of re relaunching of, of trash attack. Um, the event is scheduled for Saturday, March 21st. And we did move the location instead of being kickoff at um, Aviation Park, it's actually going to be at the fire department here in, in Kittleville Hills and starting at uh, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Um, and anyone that participates will get a free t-shirt and just have lots of fun and do a really great thing for our town. So we encourage participation. Um, as, as they did last year, this year, we um, did another poster contest, which is what brought some of the children here tonight. And as you can see behind Chris, um, pretty amazing artwork. I was really impressed. So we want to recognize the, the students that submitted artwork and also um, showcase the first place recipient. Um, and uh, Chris, hopefully you can project across the crowd to let them know um, what's going to happen with some of this artwork. Sure. Um, the artwork in years past has been used around the town. Um, used on signs at public beach accesses and certain publications, and it was certainly most featured when it was um, just put on the vinyl skin on the, on the side of our uh, trash trucks here in Colorado Hills. So it's really an awesome way to showcase the kids who participated. And if it's okay, um, Madam Mayor, I'll, I'd like to announce the winner from this year as a sixth grade student. And Johnny Rowling, would you please come up and uh, take a picture of her? So 
we have some certificates for the children who participated, so um, we'd love for them to have their um, hand, have a handshake with the mayor and receive their certificates. <laughs> And Sophie Merrick, please come up. <laughs> Sophie's a kindergartner, and she is the runner up this year. So we really, um, A through six, had many different age groups participating. Is Jill O'Dell with us tonight? Hey there. All right. <laughs> and, and I'm going to be apologizing on the last name, but would Lydia Serfernon be with us tonight? Okay. Well, great job, Lydia. <laughs> Is Lena Merrick here tonight? <laughs> And Chris, thank you again. Chris is doing, um, gosh, a, a lot of this work on his own, trying to pull this event together, and we are very, very grateful. So, um, and hopefully, especially for those of you who, children that submitted your posters, we'll hope you'll come out, put a t-shirt on, and help collect trash with us. I will be there, as, as so will my little guys. So we look forward to, to, to being out there together. And thank you. It's such a great thing for our town, um, especially you drive around you see with all of this wind this north northeast wind that we've had there's a lot of debris so we will certainly be busy on the 21st but it'll be a great thing so okay any comments questions it's beautiful okay all right we will move on then to old business and the first item this evening under old business is the recommended amendment to chapter 153 zoning the floor area ratio section 153.100d Proposed amendment to lower the current floor area ratio in the Ocean Impact Residential Zone. Um, this uh, ordinance, <clears throat> which amends the original FAR regulations that were adopted in 2006, appeared before the board back in November of 2014. We scheduled a public hearing, which occurred in December. Um, prior to that, certainly, it had been discussed at numerous meetings of the Community Appearance Commission, uh, the Planning Board. After the um, public hearing we held on December 8th, based on some of the new comments that we had received at that time, we scheduled another session. We did a joint work session between the Planning Board, the Community Appearance Committee, and the Board of Commissioners. That was held on February 3rd. Um, and at the conclusion of that meeting is when we asked that it be placed on tonight's agenda to take action on. So um, basically, I think this has been vetted considerably, and we do appreciate we have heard perspectives from um, a lot of different individuals over the course of the past um, five months and appreciate all of the input uh, from the citizens. And at this point, 
I'll open the floor for discussion from the board. I've been happy with uh, the way it's been proposed. Uh, I appreciate everybody that's come out and uh, gotten up to speak about it. And I just want everybody to know that I know from uh, speaking for myself, I'm, uh, I'm looking to try to do what I think is uh, best for the entire town. And, and that doesn't, it isn't meant to slight anyone or any business or any kind of entity. And we've had uh, discussions on and off the floor here with, um, people on both sides and we will address issues down the road that have come up regarding the hotels and uh, any other uh, businesses or entities that are affected by this rule. Nothing's written in stone so I just don't want anybody out there to think that uh, the door is being slammed shut on anything for the future. There's always room for discussion anytime anybody would like to discuss it. But for right now, I'm happy with the way the amendment is proposed. Thank you. I, I agree with Mike, um, Commissioner Hogan. I, 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 I do agree with, with what's written here. Um, I, I do, um, again, understand considerably some of the concerns that people have on, on both sides of the issue. I can see um, see the concerns that the hotel and the condo industry have, but I can also um, see the plight that the citizens have and, and the, the concerns that they have, especially um, into the future. And um, I don't want anybody to think that we're anti-business or anti-growth because that could be the, that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, I, I, I agree with Mike a hundred percent that we want to work with everybody on this and and I think we're open to any and all ideas as far as um, what we can do with con concerning any any kind of um, thoughts concerning what might be done with um, with, with what you were talking about, Jeff, maybe maybe some kind of um, hotel district, et cetera. So we're, we, that's that's a thought. We have talked about that. So um, I don't want anybody to think that we're shut. Like, as you said, the doors aren't shut on this. But uh, but I do think, and and I've said this many many times, um, it, it's 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 very important to me that aesthetically people come here for a reason, and I don't think we need. If we change that, we can't undo that. So I think it, we need to be very, very careful with that because once it's done, it can't be undone. We've already done a lot, and and we need to keep keep it as 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 close to what it is as we can. So that's that's my concern at any rate. Any other comments? I've been very vocal in my uh, on support of of this. Um, I think if we look at some of the, the concerns that have been brought up. Uh, we've got folks that are talking about shadows on the beach, which doesn't have really anything to do with the width of a building. Um, at the same time, people are talking about raising the height of a building for allowances. That does have an impact on shadows on the beach. Um, one of the concessions is if you go to, to a .45, then you reduce your setbacks by two feet. If we truly wanted to have openings between the buildings, we'd have a, a higher setback ratio, um, which would, would which would allow for more space between the buildings and potentially more visibility of the sky between them. And I didn't say water because we have a dune line that's going to keep you from seeing the ocean from the water, the road anyway. Um, we have plenty of public accesses. This doesn't address anything other than if you go to the point five, it does allow for a deeded five foot right away um, that is not finished. Um, it stays natural. Uh, I think we should, uh, I think we're having a reaction to one building that was done almost 10 years ago. And we're not really thinking about where this is going to take us when some of the buildings that we have today are going to need to be rebuilt and not rebuilt because of a catastrophe, but rebuilt because those buildings are now old and to the point where they need to be revamped. Um, so, with that, I'll move on. <laughs> and I, I do agree with everything you just said, and I, uh, but I do think this is a fair ordinance and uh, change in the code, 
and that's kind of why I support this one. But you did bring up a whole lot of good points, and I do think that we should address those points uh, on the next one. Okay. Um, I'll just make a couple comments, and then I think the motion would be in order. Um, I have taken the opportunity to speak with uh, several of the hoteliers, and um, a couple of them are in the room, to let them know of, of my position, which my position is in support of the proposed amendment, because it, it is consistent with what our current land use plan is, um, and it brings it back, back to that. I also um, really take to heart and, and um, <coughs> learned quite a bit through this process, especially from our hoteliers and, and what they shared and the information that they took the time to, to explain to us. And while I understand their concerns that this could, um, as it stands, uh, hurt their potential to rebuild, a couple of them that I had the chance to speak with, I shared um, that I, for one, and, and speaking with a, a couple of other board members, appear to be open to special overlay districts, as Jeff indicated and a couple of other um, uh, hoteliers have added. I think if it makes, if, if People can come together and create a plan that can be looked at. Um, you know, we have to be careful we don't get into a, a spot zoning. We certainly cannot do that. But I think when people look at, and, and now when I say people, I mean all of our citizens that pay taxes and, and our business owners, when you look at the financial implications of what having a thriving hotel does to our community, it's huge. Um, with hotels having valuable uh, a valuable place on land, uh, whether it's from the taxes they pay or the revenue that they bring in that we get to share a percent of that occupancy, it does have a, a, a huge impact. It helps us keep our taxes lower by having these businesses and these hotels thrive in our community. So um, I, I do think you have a, a board that, that understands that value. Um, my support in adopting this now is it keeps us consistent with the land use plan and when there is a plan presented to us that makes sense to consider because it gives us the return on the investment so to speak for the town um, then I, I think that should be brought forth and we can look at uh, either changing this or creating um, new ordinances to allow for a special overlay district um, I think, uh, as Jeff indicated, one of my big things, whether it's our decisions or just recently I was at a county meeting speaking about unintended consequences, that, that's hugely important to be evaluating what are the potential consequences of a decision. And in this case, I'm, I support this because if we, if we don't and we leave it open, um, we're, we're not being consistent with what we have heard, um, not only from the land use plans, but then repeatedly from those that have been engaged, that have been engaged in presenting this and bringing this ultimately to the board as, as it is presented. Um, so that's my position. Um, I, I personally want to address the, the comment though about that this is a reaction to just one building and um, from everyone that I've spoken to, that, that that's not the case. I think that statement has been made by others, but um, uh, I know personally and from the, the others that I've spoken with, that's not the case. Um, and wouldn't I personally wouldn't be short-sighted to just be looking at an issue from one single building or entity. So those are my comments. Um, and I think people were waiting to see if we would take action tonight. And so um, it would be in order for a motion to be put forth. I'd like to make a motion that we uh Approve the recommendation to amend Chapter 153 zoning floor area ratio 153.100D, proposed amendment to lower floor area ratio in the Ocean Impact Residential Zone, attached OB-1. Um, this uh, proposed amendment to 153.100D to lower the floor area ratio in the Ocean Impact Residential Zone is consistent with all comprehensive plans and other official adopted plans of the town of Kill Devil Hills that are applicable. The amendment is reasonable and in the public interest because it reduces the size of multifamily structures on the oceanfront to be more consistent with the adopted land use plan. I'll second that. 
Any discussion or comments? Um, I have one other thing that I wanted to say, and I didn't realize until I looked back at my notes, which was, um, as a board, we have agreed to address the next big item would be looking at single family dwellings. Um, once we do that and have a chance to go through that process, which I know will be quite a, a lofty process, um, I would be open to, at that point, discussing with the board, let some time settle, possibly even pulling together a group um, with some hotel representatives. Um, if former Commissioner Pitt um, would be willing to get him involved just because he's had a vision of overlay districts in the past, but possibly putting together a um, ad hoc committee to, to look at this. So I just don't need to do anything with that now, but I just wanted to put it in context of this discussion. So there's a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, next under old business is the item of beach driving. Um, we brought this up um, at our, our last, I believe, two meetings we've, we've spoken about this. At the last meeting, we actually went through um, what we had asked staff to provide us were, was some language information, and went, we went through um, that language pretty detailed and, and made um, changes based on what we thought would make the most sense for our ordinance. Um, and there's in our packet, and just so you all know, we can't see anything back here. Something's up with the screen. <laughs> so sometimes I look up and I realize there's nothing but some lines that will make <laughs> yeah. you dizzy if you look at them too long. But anyway, um, but I believe on your screen, you're seeing what those propose. Thank Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now we just have it off, so the lines yeah. aren't going to confuse us. But anyway, um, anyway, what I believe you're seeing and what we have in our packet. <laughs> Can um, can anyone adjust the? T I'm sorry, yeah, the temperature back there. Thank you, Meredith. It might be like right. we're looking at stripes. For the <laughs> we're hearing some messages that our, our people are hot up here. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we'll come back around. Sorry. All right. So what you're looking at on the screen and what we have before us were those recommended changes. Um, since our last meeting, though, staff have had a couple of conversations, and I had a conversation with the mayor of Nags Head because um, we wanted to explore if we could look at this from a reciprocal type process where we could honor their permits and they could honor our permits and possibly even do issuance. They could issue our, well, they would issue their own permit, but it would be valid in our town or wish we would issue a, ter a permit that would be valid in their town. Mm -hmm. um, and there seemed to be, even yesterday, um, or not yesterday, what's today? Monday, last Wednesday, um, at their commissioners meeting, they, they brought it up and there seemed to be um, interest in looking at it further. They asked the staff to bring back some information to them. This is to the NAGS head board. Um, so we wanted to kind of discuss if that may be something that we would be interested in. If it is, the, the big thing, um, and Steve has weighed in on this as well, we would need to make sure that the ordinances are substantially similar, if not the exact same. Um, because otherwise you have an enforcement issue. Um, so I guess what we do tonight depends on what we want to do, meaning if, if we would like to continue exploring this reciprocal type relationship with Nags Head where we um, honor the beach permits and we pretty much have the same thing in place, um, then we would just provide guidance that we want to staff that we want to continue working in that direction as Nags Head has done. Otherwise, we certainly have the authority to make the changes um, and to, or to schedule a, a public hearing on these regulations. So I'll pause for, did I miss anything? That yeah, you <coughs> just, so, yeah. just a question because if I don't say it, I'll forget it. The, if we don't have reciprocity, then you'd still be stopping at the line now. Um, but what's to say that we couldn't the honor lines. their permit, just like our licenses are valid in other states, but we then have to follow that state's rules. They might have seat belts or windshield wipers on when it's raining or whatever the law might be, but couldn't that same type of thing apply? I mean, then enforcement is you're now in KDH, you're now required to... Right. The, the, the problem is making them aware of the changes in the rules. If they've gotten the NAG's head permit... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the next set rules are a little bit different from yours. They, they, they're going to have that information, yeah. but they may not have yours. 
So, so maybe we hand when we, when they're issued their permits because it's on an annual basis that would they would get a copy of both. what ours is mm -hmm. and then you're saying they'd they get both they copies of type thing. And, and what and what you have before you this evening is not that different from Nags Head. Right. No, it's, it's not. It's very very similar. Um, and I don't I don't really think there would be that much of a problem um, with those kind of things. And and I think the intent of the board um, would be that. If someone was doing something that wasn't allowed, it would simply be pointed out. Um, you know, it's, it, it wasn't the intent of the of the ordinance isn't to, to write a lot of tickets and, and so forth. It's just to kind of have a feel for um, what's going on out there and letting people know um, what the proper way is to drive on the beaches. Right. Even reg even if uh, regard even if the. Uh, the rules were the same in each time. Would there be a problem with enforcement if someone was here holding an access license? I think the big, I think the biggest issue is getting the permit. I, I don't think, I really don't think there's a huge um, enforcement need. I, I think, I, I think just having people um, being accountable and getting and getting the, the permit. Um, I, I'm going to be meeting with the next head manager tomorrow. And we'll certainly ask about that if they have a lot of enforcement um, issues. But I, to my knowledge, um, Chief, we don't have a problem now with people um, doing what they're supposed to do on the beach. So I don't, I don't see that by enact. I mean, the big thing here is that you're requiring a permit, and we've never done that. Right. And and you're limiting the um, the driving in the evenings, and, right. and that's never been done. And the reason, so, and the reason the board is going in the direction of the permit is twofold. One, it, it will possibly limit some of the, you know, reduce some of the f traffic on the beach. Um, because right now you don't need anything, you just drive right out on the beach. But the other thing is it gives us an opportunity to do education and awareness and talk about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. So, I mean, that's the other added value of the reason we were all um, encouraging this, I think. So if we did just go, if we did just honor cold. theirs, then we wouldn't <laughs> sell Sorry. permits at all. Is that correct? No, we we would sell permits. It, it, um, it's just that if someone, if someone traditionally got a permit in Nags Head, they let's say they went to a tackle shop in Nags Head and, and got their permit when they got their fishing license or whatever, um, that permit would be honored in Kettlebell Hills too. It's just it's just trying to make it a little more user friendly. It's not really we're not doing this as a revenue source. Um, and that, that way, if you know they do cross the line, either way, if they bought a Kettlebell Hills permit and they find themselves in Nags Head, they're okay, and, and vice versa. And so, I thought you meant that if anybody had a Nags Head permit, they could just drive here and we'd let them. Is that what you meant or not? No, we're talking, oh, about, we're talking about being able to go back and okay. forth, right? Yeah, 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 I agree with that. Yeah, and, and not everybody knows where 8th Street is. So right. that's that's the other thing. I mean, it's, exactly. it's, you're hard pressed unless you you really spend a lot of time on the beach. If you're driving, especially, and you're just, you know, ho hum down the street, you know, oh, I just crossed over into Nags Head. That's, I mean, that's that's the that's the flip side to it. If you're just driving down the, <coughs> right now, if they've got a Nags Head permit and they end up in Kildare Hills, they're just fine. Right. But if if we change the rules and they end up in Kill Devil Hills and they don't have a KDH permit, then then they're going to be in violation. So reciprocity would be a much better way to go versus us saying, <laughs> whoops. And, and I would hope if we did that, it, we would at least be a little lenient to, to begin with because... You know, even people from around here, I would venture a guess, would not know exactly where that line is on the beach. Mm -hmm. It's it's tough enough sometimes. I get turned around on, on the beach road and the bypass sometimes <laughs> if I don't know exactly where I am. Um, and I grew up here, so it's 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 hard. I, I can't imagine on the beach and even where you are. So, it, well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> They've been torn down, but. Um, but yeah, so I, that's I, I do think this is a, a a much better option than than what we were talking about prior to, and I do think it's good to have things very similar. And I don't I don't, for, Nax has done this for years. They've not really had problems. Yeah. There's a um, after our last meeting, I spoke to excuse me, I spoke to Dave Elder, our head of our lifeguards, for a little bit about all of this, and the only issue he had was. 
he felt like that the speed limit uh, of 25 miles an hour might be a little bit too fast. And I haven't agreed with him on that. Um, now, whether or not, uh, I don't know whether Nags Head would be willing to negotiate on the rules or not and, you know, <laughs> make it, you know, different. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and if <laughs> and yeah. if we didn't, if it was a consensus that we didn't want it to be 25, then it can be so noted, you know. I, my I initial next. thought on that is, they've had. I mean, they've had their policy in place and, and that speed limit for years and years and years. And it, it, to my knowledge, and you can ask. Cliff tomorrow if, if he has any input on that, but it hasn't been an issue. Um, that's just that's good my idea. initial take. Well, and I'll I'll just give an example and not give any names. I, I know someone who was up in Corova in, in the last week who who was um, up there. They they've got some this pig hunter or something up there, and and they they have a they have yeah they. they they must be overrun with pigs up there. But anyway, you have to you have to get a permit to do this. So and, and so but you have to drive on the beach to do it. And they, they have a speed limit up there and I can't remember if he said it was ten or fifteen miles an hour up there. But they actually had police up there um clocking. And um and he, he happened to mention that he was going over the speed limit, whatever it was, by ten miles an hour. So he was either going twenty or twenty five and they didn't stop him. So whatever that was, they thought it was within reasonable limits. Yeah. So I'm just saying that was, I probably shouldn't say that in a public meeting, but I won't call any <laughs> names. But just to, just to prove a point, yeah. th that's a, th that must be pretty standard. Even because those, those, it was pretty well posted that that's what it was. Did Jeff tell you that? I'm not, no. <laughs> um, you don't mention any names. I'm not mentioning any names. Would we, um, would the board provide consensus to have Debbie continue and staff continue to explore this type of reciprocal relationship? Really? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Definitely. I mean, honestly, I, I like the way it's it's currently written. I think it's to the point where, without having public comment on it and getting potentially in, more input, that it. It probably, I mean, I'm good with where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can show yeah. them our basic draft version sure. and mm -hmm. then start comparing where there may be any yeah. variances. <laughs> and, and there probably will be some variances because yeah. because the beaches are different the, the, in the two towns and, and there may be some things that, that they want done differently. But I really do not see that as, as a problem. I think the I think as long as the basics, you know, you got to have the permit, speed limit, you know, those uh, you know, the time um, in the evenings, and the, both of those are the same. Um, right. So a lot of those big points, the board gave us guidance at the last meeting that you that you liked what was being done in Nags Head. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's, um, I'll, and I'll know more tomorrow after meeting with Cliff. Yeah. Great. That okay. Thank you. Good. That sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, thank you, guys. Okay, moving on to new business. We have one item this evening. Um, it is uh, the East 8th Street Improvements Project Engineering Proposal, and we have our town engineer, Pete Berkheimer, here from American Engineering. And welcome, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to give us a brief overview of what's before us? Brief will be the watchword, Madam Mayor, <laughs> uh, members of the board, and town manager and staff, Pete Berkheimer, American Engineering. Regarding the 8th Street, uh, proposal. It's exciting to be working with our neighbors to the south and synchronize our procedures long enough to do a road that needs repair and has the town line right down the middle of it, as you noted earlier. Uh, we've already made some good progress in getting our ideas together, and this proposal has had to be adjusted a couple of times to reflect that, but we'd appreciate your favorable consideration on that. Also, um, I'm going to attempt without uh, getting some personal attention from some gentlemen in uniform to make it back to Deep Creek in time to catch the tail end of a trustees meeting at my church. So uh, <laughs> if you have any questions of me regarding the sidewalk bid that comes up under consent, I could address those now if it was your pleasure. Okay. Great. Thank Standing you. Standing by. 
Okay. So what we're looking at tonight is uh, if the board agrees to the proposal in the total amount of twenty five excuse me twenty five thousand four hundred dollars for the services uh, that were outlined here, um, which would also include the budget amendment that's at your seat. Um, oops, budget amendment number fifteen to provide the funding for this portion of the Eighth Street project. Is there a motion? Or if, if you're not ready? To no, I was just curious. Is this, is this the street that the gentleman was here about uh, about a year ago, I guess? Mm -hmm. No, sir, but it's uh -huh. awfully close. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> that portion of Wrightsville uh, that he is, that Mr. Arn, I believe you're speaking of, uh, yeah. was quite interested in intersects this part of East 8th. Um, of course, the proposal covers East and West 8th, the uh, Harris Teeter side of 8th as well. Okay. Yeah. That, what you're referencing, would be picked up next, next year in the um, yeah, that's what street improvement all project. All yeah. 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 This is where we had discussed partnering because the town line runs right down right. the middle, right. yep. partnering with NAGSA to try yep. to do some cost sharing on this. Right. Yeah, we tried to give it to them. They wouldn't take it. <laughs> Our half. They <laughs> 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 wouldn't take it. I don't know why, but I don't either. Okay. Any other questions for Pete? The, the, only, uh, the only question I had was that the proposal for construction to begin was January 16. Is, there, is that j because of our budget or just for timing? or uh, Commissioner Appleman, timing is the main thing. Uh, more than anything else, this is a paving job. We'll do a little bit of drainage in our part, but it's mainly a paving job. Okay. Paving when the weather, when it's all surface course or mostly surface course and you get below about 50 degrees, uh, the quality suffers a little bit and we want you guys and gals to get the best quality you can for our dollars. So if we, if we didn't luck out and get it paved by November or so, we'd be having to wait until March and it gets really weird whenever you get a project almost finished, then a cold spell sets in and you got to freeze the job yeah. for a couple of months. So. Rather than get in a bind, uh, as, as we work through this new partnering relationship, we figured it would be better to, to uh, have the work begin. At least, the, certainly the paving work probably done in, in like March. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good question. Okay. Any other questions? So I'm prepared with a motion. I make a motion that uh, we approve American Engineering's proposal in the total amount of Twenty-five thousand four hundred dollars for the services out on the report. A second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And then, did anyone, while Pete's here, before he darts out the door, um, does anyone have any questions on? It's on the consent agenda. Item number four is the sidewalks that he was referencing. Yeah. And simply, what that is 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 um, getting the money in the proper. Um, account. It's not really an engineering issue. Right. Yeah, nothing. Okay. Thank, Thank you, very you very much. much. Maybe you Safe get, travels. Pete, maybe you can get one of our officers to give you escort up yeah. there. <laughs> Just to the town line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Or not. Good call. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Taxpayer dollars, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Let's move on then to Commissioner's agenda. Commissioner Midget? Uh, now on the community appearance committee and we're going to have a survey coming out pretty soon so stay tuned hopefully everyone will fill it out it's good information for us to have that's all great for me. thank you i was going to bring up the um, single family item so you've already kind of covered that that we'll be bringing that up <coughs> at future meetings so that was all i had um <laughs> since we are on that any recommendations on where we want to start with that, Debbie. Or if not, maybe. Well, the, the um, I'll just throw this out for discussion. the The floor area ratio came back up from the um, community appearance commission. I don't know if you're looking at the single family. This this is size of single family dwellings. I don't know if you're looking at that from aesthetic um, standpoint. If so, then that would be my recommendation. If not, then it would simply come through the um, planning board. So I guess wow. we can suggest whether we want to direct it to the CAC as a starting point or whether we want to send it to the planning board as a starting point then. Right. Well, and one of the things I looked at was um, 
making a, a clear identification of the drive aisle and then reducing what the stock parking abilities are there. And the other, the other thought, a third thought would be if you actually wanted it as an agenda item mm -hmm. for this board so that you could give guidance to whichever entity you wanted to send it to. Um, you know, I, making an assumption here, you're obviously not thinking that you want something bigger. So you're looking at the size, you know, but kind of giving them some guidance, sort of like you did with the floor area ratio. Right. And we can certainly put, put it on um, an agenda if that's how you'd like to do it. Yeah, what, uh, do you guys have a feeling one way or the other? I hadn't gotten that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, it start, so. we could put it on our ag agenda for the next meeting, unless that one, I know our April meeting is going to be really full. It may need to be our, our next meeting after that. <laughs> the May meeting? Yeah, may need to do it. The April meeting is going to be pretty packed, plus yeah. we have the public hearing. Um, the second meeting in April is a public forum. Right. right. So right. are you guys, maybe yeah. we put it on our meeting for May, that mm -hmm. way we have enough time to kick it around. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, I'm, we, I would be concerned that we don't have enough guidance to give. True. Okay. Good idea. Okay, so we'll put it on the May, um, put it on the Board of Commissioners May agenda for you to discuss to determine if you want to send it to the CAC or send it to the Planning Board. Perfect. With guidance. Information. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. 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 Mr. Rebottom? I have nothing. Okay. Your time, have you? No, I'm just uh, planning to be at the trash attack. Hope we can get a lot of people out there. There's refreshments too, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Um, yeah. There's coffee and water ahead of time. In fact, I believe um, Front Porch is so I'm here. So you may want to make sure I'm getting the nods correctly. They're donating coffee to us. They did that last year. Good coffee. Yeah, very good coffee. And then afterwards, I believe it's a pizza party I'm seeing nods again good okay I'm trying to just go off memory here so yes food and fellowship okay um, we'll move on then to mayor's agenda a few items this evening in the packet the first item is the proclamation declaring April 2015 as cancer awareness and paint the town purple month um, Dare County's Relay for Life event is scheduled May 2nd through the 3rd at Roanoke <coughs> Island Festival Park and with the board's approval, I uh, would like to adopt this proclamation. So moved. Yep. Second. Any comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The next April is also Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, the local Dare County Children and Youth Partnership um, always uh, in partnership also with the Dare County Department of Social <laughs> Services um, helps put on a display they do awareness events about child abuse um, about April being child abuse prevention month uh, in the past you've probably seen the children on the corner we've we've offered them our um, lot at the corner of 8th Street there um, those children represent substantiated cases just in Dare County of child abuse and or neglect um, I'm not sure if they're definitely doing that again, but if you see them out there, that is what that reprimands, represents. Um, so uh, to raise uh, awareness, I would like to request we adopt this proclamation declaring April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Yep, so moved. Second. Any comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, and a third proclamation, April is a busy month proclaiming things. <laughs> um, April is also National Autism Awareness Month. Um, and um, autism, uh, this event or this month has been celebrated since the 1970s. Um, it's a special opportunity to raise public information and awareness about autism. Um, and I request that we adopt the proclamation declaring April as um, Autism Awareness Month in Kittle Hills. So moved. Second. Great. Any comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Um, next is, um, and Matt mentioned this, that on the 16th from 3 to 7 p.m., uh, Boehm is hosting, um, uh, basically, the, the venue is at the Ramada, um, about, I guess it's kind of a public 
forum, so to speak. As he mentioned, the format's a little different than what we normally think of as a public forum. Um, but regardless of, of what side you may be on, you globally, the public, because the board, we've already taken a position um, in opposition, it's a good opportunity to go and ask questions, learn information, but it's not the big public venue to hear people's positions or sides. Um, I commend the surf riders for working together to put on the press conference. That way we can really hear from people in our community um, about what the, uh, you know, what, what the takeaway is um, about the risk to our area based on the unknown uh, returns. Um, I did attend the, the same format of a meeting up in Norfolk several weeks ago um, and, uh, you know, learned, and learned something. It certainly didn't change uh, my position or anything I would recommend this board to do differently other than to make sure we continue to get our, our voice out there. Um, on Monday of last week, uh, there was a gentleman that presented at the Dare County Board of Commissioners meeting. He uh, was presenting on the 2020 kind of vision for transportation, um, which was linked to economic development for the state. And what I found interesting is the focus on um, highway and transportation improvements to Moorhead City. And, um, and I, you know, tying in a lot of this thinking Moorhead City would likely be a port uh, well, they're already a port, but that they could be a broader port for offshore drilling. Um, there's significant commitment in that 2020 plan to um, have those improvements to Moorhead City. I'm sure that's not on a whim. I would think there's probably some pretty significant strategic intentions there. So I, I share that just, again, whatever side you're on, just to be cognizant of, of you know, the, the bigger picture. Um, so anyway, I hope you all can make that meeting. Um, it's a, it's a drop in. So even, you know, it says three to seven, you're not there for four hours. You can be there for 15 minutes. You can be there for an hour going to the different stations. I was wondering, wondering, yeah. Do they have a calendar where they're going to have specific topics? Or? Um, it's no, it's a walk in and there's like, f it was either four or five stations. The first okay. station is a video that they've put together that kind of explains, um, you know, what, what the scoping is and what the process of scoping is. Um, and then there are three or four other so, sec, um, little stations. So the time, that's why the time is variable as far as your commitment, depending on how quickly you move through the stations and, and what questions you may have for the, the BOEM staff that are there. Okay. So. Matt, what, what time are, is y'all spent? 4.30. At the Comfort Inn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the press conference is at 4.30. Okay, um, I did have, and Greg, are the slides from the tourism? Okay, I, they're I on that the, side. I have, yes, I have the first one, jobs, comparison, tourism. Okay, um, yeah. and I think in our, you guys have the color slides. Did you guys get the colored slides? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, they're at their okay. places. <laughs> okay. Um, um, sorry, because I yes. can't, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if Lee Nettles is going to, at the press conference, go over this in any detail, but I wanted to share it. Um, thank you. And, and it's, it's here somewhere in my stack. I'm going to, if you guys don't mind, go that way so I, I know what I'm speaking of to the, <laughs> <laughs> the public. Um, but basically, these are three slides that... Can I use your mic? Okay, I'm going to miss it. Um, but anyway, I, I, I wanted to share these and um, hope that uh, Lee Nettles with the Tourism uh, Board will do this. He's the Executive Director of the Tourism Board. We'll do this at the press conference next week. Um, but he took uh, the projections that came from Senator Kosoff from a, a study that they're, they're citing, which is also cited in here, um, about the, the projections of um, the high, they have a high estimate, a medium estimate, and a low estimate of uh, this specifically would be um, the jobs and, and the revenue from offshore oil and gas, but took them and compared them um, against basically jobs in not just Bear County, because this is not just a Bear County issue, but looking at um, the eight ocean counties, that's the 
um, the, the, the red line, not the straight across, that's where you're extrapolating that, but the, the red squiggly line, um, but also the 20 counties that are um, basically have an impact from tourism because they connect to the eight counties. And so whether you're looking at the job slide or the next slide, um, which is a, a comparison of state and, lo uh, state and local revenue, um, or just an overall, the third slide, <coughs> there's copies of these on our website now, the third slide being the overall economic impact. Um, what the, the message is, is, is the risk um, worth what the potential, to have, you know, the, worth what it cost here with, with, um, with our tourism industry. And when you look at that solid red line that extrapolates out the projections, and this is based on a 30-year projection because you know, if, if the oil and gas industry, if, if there is enough there, um, you, know, you would actualize that later. It's not going to be an immediate, um, uh, immediate return on the investment. But anyway, why risk a proven industry, which we know is tourism and, and all that's associated with that, not, again, not just for Dare County, but with all the, the coastal communities or those that are touched by tourism, when you're looking at getting on the high end of your return for your oil and gas, you're just intersecting with where we know tourism will put us as projections. And those projections for tourism are based on um, industry standard calculations. He didn't just pull out those numbers. So he used numbers provided by the oil and gas industry, <coughs> comparing those with um, industry standards for projecting out revenue. And that, that's just the bottom line message there is uh, why would you be risking that? I think that's something that our board has already, we, we came to that conclusion without these charts, but it certainly takes the message home um, a little more poignant and stand behind that. Um, so Lee will be much more eloquent than I was in describing that, but anyway, I just wanted to put that out there for, for everyone to see. Um, the next thing, I just wanted to provide an update um, some of you may have followed last Monday night at the, or Monday night, Monday day, last Monday, at the Dare County uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. It was a packed house, um, standing room only, and in large part it was because there was a, an item that we learned of. It wasn't an agenda item. We um, actually learned of it just a few days before the meeting, really over the weekend where um, Senator Cook and two other senators had um, made it known that they were sponsoring legislation that included a section in that legislation that um, referenced occupancy taxes. And the way that legislation was written is it would give Dare County full control over the 6% occupancy tax um, or the, the shared revenue that comes in from the municipalities. And um, it was going to give them control over that to be able to use for Oregon Inlet dredging. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it, at the meeting, it became uh, a pretty um, uh, contentious environment because you had those from the fishing industry that were there that understand the serious situation that we're in, that that inlet is close to closing in and the livelihood would be lost, all of the economic impact from the fishing industry. Um, I mean, it would be a huge loss to Dare County. But they were there and then you had the municipalities, the tourism industry there. And unfortunately, it seemed like they were having to compete against each other in what they were describing. And I say it's unfortunate because it really isn't um, it, it shouldn't have been the debate, and it truly isn't the debate. Um, I, I think it was unanimous in the room and, and hopefully in the community, the value of Oregon Inlet to all of us because of the, the economic impact to our community. What the concern was, um, certainly for me, and uh, I was in touch with town staff, was um, we as a town, just like the other towns, benefit greatly from the way the formula is currently written and how we use occupancy tax to help us fund tourism related expenses in our town. And so um, if we were to lose or they were to change that formula and if we were not to have the occupancy tax in Kittleville Hills or that revenue, um, 
I mean, that would equate to basically a 10 cent tax increase just to maintain where we are. Um, I think NAG's head quoted it would be over a 10 cent tax increase for them. And not to mention, if we diverted the funds that are currently um, allocated with this occupancy tax for beach nourishment, it could disrupt all of what we've worked on with the three towns and even the county's plan down south to be able to fund the, the beach nourishment projects. Um, so it really wasn't a, is this more important than that? It was a matter of keep this intact, but you need to find something to do. Um, uh, we, we need a plan, a funding plan to address Oregon Inlet. Um, the outcome of the meeting, the commissioner's meeting, um, I will tell you it was about two and a half hours of public comment that, that occurred last Monday. Um, when they did finally vote on and take action, they did ask Senator Cook, or they, they voted for the county commissioners to send a letter to Senator Cook, Cook asking him to remove the reference to um, Dare County funding in that bill. There's other things in the bill, so they weren't looking at trying to get the whole bill pulled. Um, so that was the first motion. The second motion that they approved was allocating the equivalency of Dare County's share of the occupancy tax, a percent of that, um, to actually establish a new line item for Oregon Inlet dredging. Um, and I think on an annual basis, that's roughly, I've heard figures anywhere from 3.2 to 3.8 million dollars. Um, so those were the things that were approved. Um, they communicated with Senator Cook's office, but the language has yet to be pulled from the bill. It didn't get pulled on the floor, so um, they have been in touch with him, and um, he says that it will be pulled during committee. Um, but you saw the letter that um, I sent out Friday on behalf of us, basically saying, please pull that, that that's, that's not um, <laughs> the right avenue to go. Um, Kitty Hawk, Duck, and Nags Head have also sent letters as well, as Dare County did send their letter. So I bring that up, one, just to have a little bit, uh, make sure everybody has perspective on it, but two, because uh, it is something that I think we need to keep our eye on. Um, I, one, that the, hopefully the language does get pulled, um, but two, you know, they shared a presentation after all of this, uh, Bob Peel, former commissioner in Kettleville Hills, now lives in Manio. They shared a, a presentation on what's happening at Oregon Inlet, and they shared overhead photos um, dating from, I think, 1960s up until present day. And, and it really is a dire situation. Um, and uh, I hope that um, the county will continue to provide some leadership in figuring out what's a long-term solution. The funds that they've allocated would help put a dredge there. Um, but uh, anyway, I think this is a big, a big issue, and uh, whether um, for Kiltable Hills, just because of the overall economic impact. So anyway, a little long-winded, but thank you for allowing me to describe that. I think a lot of people that were there um, were, one, they were thinking that if the county approved it, it would immediately be money for dredging, and, and that wasn't the case. Um, but two, I don't think they... Um, and all understanding why, didn't probably know the full ramifications, the citizens of what that, what that, how that would impact the towns and also potentially the, the beach nourishment plans. So, question. any questions? Yeah. The question on that is, um, and I, I'm, I'm glad you put in our letter about the funding for that needs to come at the state and federal level. I well, mean, we did that from your comments, so thank you, yes. <laughs> um, but my, my question would be if, Dare County is in support of our wishes at this point, and the language does not get removed. Do we know what could happen at that point? Um, well, hopefully nothing. I okay. mean, in the sense, uh, but it could at any future time. You know, if, if, they if that would language have is the chanted. ability to do it, even if right now their intent is to not do it. Ex correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or comments on that? All right, that is all I have this evening. Um, <coughs> town manager's agenda? You mean? Town attorney? Nothing tonight. Okay. Debbie, the consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> this evening on the consent agenda, we have the minutes from the February 3rd and February 9th, 2015 meetings. Um, budget amendments, there's one that's 
in your packet and there's one that's at your place. Um, the one in your packet um, goes back to um, an item that I touched on recently and that's um, that we will begin um, accepting credit cards um, for um, purchases, um, payments. We are looking at limiting um, the amount to $500 for the customers and we'll kind of see how that plays out if we run into problems with that. If we have a lot of 510s and 525s and stuff, you know, we'll certainly look at that. But we don't, we don't want to get into the large um, building permits, you know, up into thousands of dollars because there is a charge back to the town. Um, so that um, is the first budget amendment. The second one, um, number 16, is to appropriate funds for design and build bidding of the public works complex phase three. The intent is for the engineering cost to be reimbursed in full from the proceeds of the installment financing for this project and due to the possible time issue, the bidding and financing may not be awarded into the fiscal year 15-16. Um, number three is the Government Educational Access Channel. This is the proposed budget um, for 2015-16. The, um, the budget must be approved by each of the participant, participating entities um, and the current annual 1,000 membership fee um, remains in place. Also with the um, Government Access Channel is a draft amendment to the Interlocal Shared Use Agreement regarding um, the government and education channels. This um, allows for the municipalities to have more flexibility in producing candidate forums that involve candidates from Dare County for the candidates' races when the offices they are seeking have an impact on Dare County. That's like the, um, the League, of, League of Women Voters put those um, forums in place and this allows the municipalities to work with the League of Women Voters so that they can be shown <laughs> on channel 20, just a little bit of a technicality. Um, and then four is the one that Pete had mentioned. This is um, US 158 sidewalk improvements, um, phase two. This is um, simply approval of the consent agenda to authorize the expenditure out of the um, reserve line of $84,290.21 um, to accomplish the, the project. And the low bidder um, was RPC. And with that, I would ask the board to uh, approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you. So moved. I, I just had a quick question. Are we going to charge a, a convenience fee or anything on the credit card? There, there is. Um, we are actually charged that, and and that that's why we would. Um, that's why we're wanting to limit to five hundred. We would not pass that on. That that would not okay, be our suggestion at this time. Okay. Now there is a convenience fee if. Um, when people call in and use their credit card, but this would be actual upstairs at the finance department where they would swipe it. Okay. And my uh, paper says phase two. You said phase three on the public on the public uh -huh. works complex. Well, it's phase two. Okay. Just <laughs> and you can sure. see with with that surgery in your eyes. Yep. I gotta watch <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. Thank um, you. <clears throat> Mayor so Pritchett, would you be, make a, do you that's mind be corrected amending I'll, your, or you I'll can with, cite I'll that with, in your, I'll no, with, his, his, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay, for now, and then, because um, we'll need a new motion that actually names that correction in there. That's right. Well, it, it's, it, I, I said it, it's, it's correct. <laughs> you just said it incorrectly, oh. sorry. I thought it was oh, wrong okay. here. <laughs> so it, it's phase two. It's phase two. Not phase three. Right, we're on the same thing. Yeah. Okay. okay, got it. So I resubmit my rejected. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. Okay. Yeah. Any any discussion? <laughs> okay. Uh, Everybody good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. It was tedious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the uh, we moving on now. This is the second side. The second. Goodness. The second time set aside this evening for public comment. Is there anyone that wishes to speak soon? And if you're leaving or going to speak at public comment. <laughs> oh, no, not her again. <laughs> but I promise to be really, really brief. Um, I just want to say thank you to you all, uh, the Board of Commissioners, for your uh, excellent consideration of the FAR. Um, as a former high school government teacher, it's been a real pleasure to see local government at work. 
Um, I'd also uh, like to say thanks real quick to Chris Merrick and all the people working on Trash Attack. Um, and also to mention to you that we, we need a little good time publicity sometimes. So I'll remind you all that Trash Attack is a project of the Community Appearance Commission. So we get smiles for that one. And not so much controversy. But thank you very much. Um, our next meeting of the Community Appearance Commission is Thursday, March 26, um, at 8.30 a.m. in this room. And we invite you to attend at any time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> is there anyone else that would like to speak? Yes, Jack. Jack McCombs, uh, 917 Cedar Drive. Uh, I come to a lot of the BOC meetings, as you know. Uh, tonight, I deliberately came because when I read the account of what happened at the county last week, I was really alarmed. Was your letter uh, posted on the website, by the way? I haven't read it. Um, no. Not yet. We can do that. Yeah, it just it went it out Friday and then all the CCs today, but we, we certainly can do that. What, what I was most alarmed about, uh, I haven't even considered the 10 cent raise in our tax rate. I was really concerned about the beach nourishment. Uh, it's a matter of public record. I'm a big supporter of beach nourishment, but I thought if those uh, that occupancy tax formula was changed, what would that do to that to the nourishment project that we have on the, there's a thin line that we're walking right here about people not being able to afford what's coming because of nourishment. I think most of us can, but if we were to lose the formula currently with the occupancy tax, then I think that puts the project in, in a lot of jeopardy. I also think, from what I understand from the Outer Banks voice, that they're supposed to remove that clause in the reconciliation process. If that doesn't happen, then inevitably somewhere down the road, there's a strong potential that the current decisions being made at the county will change because it depends who's in office at the time. And, it, and as you said, Mayor, it, it, there's no resistance to the the great need in Oregon Inlet. We all recognize that. But if you rob Peter to pay Paul, Peter is going to go broke. And that's, <laughs> and we're Peter in that case. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Thanks, Thanks, Jack. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else that would, yeah, skip. <laughs> I agree with what the gentleman just said. However, at the same time, I'm kind of glad that I'm, I take it there's a percentage that's going through the county that will be put towards Oregon Inlet. Is that? Well, what, what they're, it's not the occupancy tax because the, the it's legislation, it's what, what the motion was, was for the equivalency of their share of the occupancy okay, tax. Okay. Um, what's left to be, decided and I guess Dare County will in the budget that will address it in the budget is where that's coming from because that it's the, the, the whole thing it's not there's no new money yet no one's brought up any new money so it's going to be where are they pulling it from their existing operating budget um, to fund it so and, and and that's where a lot of the confusion at the, the meeting was is nothing that was being discussed is new money so when you talk rob peter to pay paul or where do you make cuts from an existing budget to be able to fund this um you know i'm sure the county has some tough decisions to make moving forward but it did raise the awareness um for a lot of people that weren't probably aware of how critical this is to oregon inlet and how immediate a d something needs to be done i think my point from that was really i think we have to do something locally to send a signal to the state and the federal government that we are concerned about it and we we're prepared to do our share I think you know we got to do it somehow because it is critical and one other thing on the beach driving thing while I'm up here um, you know I think the officer said there's hadn't been any issues I'm not sure why why it's coming up if there's never been any issues but if we do are bringing it up I like the direction we're taking I think um, beach nourishment will help the issue as well because 
obviously with more space, you don't have people driving up on the edge of the dunes and, and all that and where people are. And generally it's in the winter months when there's not many people on the beach anyway. So I don't know that it's an issue, but I like the tack that we're taking if if we are going to have a permit fee. And with the next reciprocation is a great way to go as well. So anyway, and thank you all for the, the vote on the FAR tonight. I think that showed some guts on our commissioner's um, behalf. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Public comment. Okay. No. Um, as far as uh, response to, to public comment, um, Jack, thank you. And again, we just all need to keep our eyes open and, and watch this and uh, be engaged <laughs> and skip the same thing. On the beach driving, I would share that um, this came about through a request from some citizens and then we received um, some emails as well for people that asked us to look into it um, not from a police violation but more of the concerns of um, the, the, the ruts and a safety factor and and just people maybe not respecting driving on the beach the way they should that's mm -hmm. comment so yeah I think the most important part is that going to be an awareness is going to be brought forward Absolutely. by people that get a permit are going to know what they can and can't do whereas now it's just the wild west it could be the wild west out there but i think that's a good idea and I'm also like, with the um if I, if I might just add um with the bill that was introduced by senator cook and the other senators um it would be good if the citizens do feel strongly that that language be pulled that that they contact the senate um Senator's office, and um, we'll have we'll have that information contact information on the website. Great, thank you. Yeah, um, great point. That and also, um, Boehm, if there's information, um, I know Surfrider's got it on their website too. If you would like to make your public comment um, on on that as well, that you know, both of those things, um, it's nice for us to have a collective voice, but it's also really great to have individual voices shared to our um, officials. Any closing comments, anything from the group? No? Okay, a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good night. Thank you all for being with us this evening. Thank you. Absolutely.